create with Franz Sydney. Hello everyone, welcome to the show. It's good to have you again and this is Franz Sydney. I am your host and I'm so happy to be with you for a little while to talk about for about half an hour on how to help you to get those videos out, to produce them, to get them out. So here are the steps because last time we talked about why people don't do videos and now this time I'm going to tell you about how to get started with your video production. They will help you to be confident on camera, get the content you need to reach more people and just feel just great because you can do something new that you have not done before or not very successfully. So let's get going and enjoy yourself. I'm not one to waste the time, so I'm going to tell you straight away that the very first thing that you need to make successful videos to get started straight away is to get the right mindset. That's the thing. If you don't have the right mindset, it doesn't matter how much money you have, the looks you have, how much expensive equipment you have, the light is just fine, but the mindset is not correct then something along the line will go wrong. So always start with this mindset, a winning mindset, a learning mindset where you go all the right steps to do and you are clear about them, you feel great about them, you work maybe with a coach or with a therapist. If you could not get to this point, to this place where you're happy about making videos and to make mistakes, to allow yourself to make mistakes so you can learn and grow. Because nobody has been born with the possibility and capabilities and skills of getting straight into videos and look amazing. Yes, I know, kids do that, right? They are amazing. They don't care about weight and looks and they can do whatever they're great, but we're not born as video makers, let's say that. So the second thing that you want when you're preparing videos is to have a plan. If you do not have a plan, you are more likely to fail, to lose steam, to not feel very encouraged to get lost and to have a dreaded freeze when you are live on a video. So you definitely have a plan to prepare and this plan has to be prepared by asking yourself several questions. And here is the question number one. Drum rolls. Why are you doing this? Why are you making this video? Is it to say hello to your grandparents that you haven't seen because they live in New Zealand? Is it to sell something to somebody? Are you talking to your boyfriend far away? Are you selling therapy, coaching or an item that will make people solve an important problem? Who are you and why are you doing this? Once you get clear on the why, it's going to be a lot easier to prepare the steps and a real action plan. If you don't know why you're doing it, you will be wasting a lot of time and it will change direction over time. People will understand that and therefore we will not resonate just as well as they would if you were very focused on why you're doing this. Is that a mission or it just out for the money? People will know that, they will understand it, so make sure you know this step very, very well. And here's another very important question. What is it you're trying to help people to understand when you're making your video? Is it how your vacuum cleaner works? Or are you trying to solve the problem of why a certain glue is not working on your carpentry bits? Are you showing them how to apply the makeup that you're selling? What is that you're trying to help them to see, to understand, so that they can resonate, so they will buy your product or your services? What is it which is really, really important? So I'm not getting a topic, just any topic, because you know, just on trans, roller skating. What is that you're trying to help people understand? Are you trying to show them how to stop or how to get started? Or are you do, how do you bubbles? What is it? You have to know exactly that and that will give you a timeline, a beginning, a middle and the end. So then you can put a title that makes sense. So you can put SEO, search engine optimization, keywords so people can find your video. So make sure you know what is the message that they want to get from your video? You might think that this is not important, but the number one reason why people switch off from a video in the very first seven seconds 
is because the video person there is waffling about the weather and how they're doing and what the husband said and their dog said and they're not getting to the point and most people do not have the patience to listen to you waffling about your life. If a video is entitled how to stop headaches without taking a painkiller, you start getting a video and start talking about that. And the more focused you will be, the more people will resonate because they will understand what you're going on about and if you're interested, they will keep watching you. And YouTube will reward people who watch the entire video and you will get higher in the searches because people are watching all of it and not just the first 30 seconds. So keep people hooked from the beginning by being focused. Another point that is really, really important is just who are you talking to? Are you talking to 20-year-old students? Are you talking to 30-year-old housewives that have two toddlers in the house? Are you talking to a woman who is a CEO and maybe is divorced or on her second marriage or just getting married? Are you talking to a pregnant woman or to a man who is about to retire? Who are you talking to? Who is your audience? And where do they go to watch videos? Do they watch videos? And this will change everything. How you're talking, how you're dressed, the content, everything you're going to say is going to be different because you are talking to those people in their language, not your language, their language. And also this will change where you will post your videos. And why would they be important? Well, it has to be important because then the format, the length, the resolution, the color and everything else will be different if it's on Instagram, YouTube and TikTok and etc. There are different things that people tend to expect in a certain platform. So you have to kind of know who are these people, where are they hanging about and what type of video is okay in their platform so you can really not waste your time and make it just right to begin with. So I want you to really think for a few minutes and who is your audience. If you didn't know that, then that could be one of the reasons why your business isn't going very well. Because if you don't know who you're talking to, how can you sell your products, you know? If you sell things for shepherds that are working with sheep all the time, you should be in all the networking events for shepherds. And you should be going to the colleges, you know, like here in Easton College, talking about the products for the sheep. You shouldn't be around going to, I don't know, a window company, because that's not your audience. So who is your audience? Where should you be talking to these people is extremely important so that you can narrow your audience. Why is that? Because when in marketing, when you talk to everyone, you're literally talking to no one because it doesn't resonate. So it's very, very important you're talking just to your public. It doesn't matter if you're just 100 in the whole world, but they will love your video because you really understand them. So focus on them only. Okay, next step. Once you cleared up all this stuff, who you're talking to, what's your thing, now you need to get very, very clear on your strategy. So what is it you're trying to achieve with your videos? How are you going to do that? What tools are you going to use? How are you going to talk to them? Is there a sequence? Is there a funnel? What is going on? Is there an offering at the end of the video? You have to get really clear on your strategy. Otherwise, you risk losing people in the end of the video because they don't know what to do after that. So they have to know. Is there a way to get a call? Can they contact you? Can they have a sample of your stuff? Can they try a session? Can they buy a liter of your product? If they don't know what to do next, you're not really clear on your strategy. So make sure they know how to set up an appointment, how to come and see you, how to buy, how to order, how it works in the country and all that. The strategy is a lot more than that. But that's the beginning, right? They have to know what's going on, what are you doing for them and what they can get out of watching the video and then getting to work with you. Okay, so assuming you've done all the steps before, you know who you are, who you're talking to, etc. Now it's time to think about what you're going to say in your video. And that's very important because people understand very, very well and right away if you are talking from a script. Even if you're reading with a really good way and, and an accent and a tone intonation and it's all perfect, it just doesn't sound right because the words are just chosen really perfectly and yeah, it just doesn't flow like conversation. 
So that's a little bit difficult to resonate and be really authentic if you're reading every word you're going to say. And just to let you know, I'm not reading anything here. I'm just thinking of what I would tell a person if I were giving them advice about starting a video. I'm not reading from a book. I'm just telling you what my experience is and what I learned and I'm open to suggestions and to correction and to everything else. And the same should be for you guys. If you're making a video, you have to really know what you're going to say. You know it. You lived it. You've been there. So you do not need to read from a script. Know exactly what you will say. For example, you can say, my shampoo that I'm selling here on this video is amazing. I created this shampoo because I had, um, I don't know, my hair was falling off. I had dandruff or my hair was never correct with a color, tone and whatever. And I created this, I made so much research and then after that I created a new formula and I mixed and I made experiments and then I tried it and my hair was in a little bit better. Then I tried it again and now it's absolutely amazing. My hair is beautifully shiny. You could almost touch it. Look at this, which is amazing and now I have a special offer for you. So in the end of this, you say, well, here's the offer. You have to say what it is, how you sell it, how much we're going to pay, how much is the fee for, you know, the um, sending fees or whatever, the custom, and then whatever else it is. I just can't think of anything else. You have to know exactly how they're going to get to your thing. But learn it. Memorize it. And if any, you can write a little, little list, like literally a prompt, a keyword, that you can put right under your camera so it doesn't look like you're talking to somebody else and look straight at the camera and just talk about that freely. If you cannot talk about it, you don't know what it is. So how do you expect them to buy something that you cannot talk about freely? I mean, you know nothing about it. And this, of course, gets you to the next step, which is to become really comfortable about the content that you will share. It could be really difficult about maybe trading, how to do stock trading, how to understand the ceiling and, you know, and all this stuff. It could be a lot of jargon in there. Do you know about it? Do you know the words? Do you know how to explain complex logarithmic stuff or not? Because if you can't, if you're not comfortable, it's going to really show. Are you talking about facial creams? Do you know about creams and names and how they come and go and what, what chemicals are inside? Do you know or you don't? You have to be comfortable. So read, research, learn. Not everyone is selling something that they've been, you know, for 20 years with it. If you're doing sessions, you're a coach, you're a therapist, are you comfortable at talking about, for example, mental health or exhaustion, about PTSD? Do you know what they are? Have you ever opened a psychology book? Because, you know, you can make quite big mistakes in there if you have not done your research before. So have you studied about it? Have you treated somebody? You have to be comfortable. You have to know what you're talking about in details so that you can really help a person listening to you to understand, is this product or service for me or not? Because that's the question. The question is, what's in it for me? That's all, all they care about, really. Okay, and now comes the biggie. So one of the things you really will have to do at this point is to learn how to use your equipment and what to do if things go wrong. So there will be a point where you will want to use what you already have, maybe your mobile phone, maybe your normal computer. Learn how to use it to do basic videos so you can start practicing and learn what to do if things go wrong. You know, there could be blackouts. It could be that your garage band is not recognizing your microphone anymore. So you have to restart, I'm telling you. If you restart, you will recognize it. Could it be that your USB cable can become a little bit detached and then your audio is not coming through? Could it be that the settings have to be changed all the time because your computer is not quite recognizing everything? Could it be that the light might be flickery? Or you start things at 5 p.m. and then at 6 is dark and you're plunging in the darkness and nobody can see your face in your life. So there are loads and loads and lots of things to think that can go wrong. So my suggestion is to become really comfortable doing your basics fast. So you know how to switch on, switch off, change your basic settings of your mobile phone or your computer, your tablet, your microphone, so you know what you're doing and you don't have to fumble for ages. And also, 
If you practice freely, you will become more relaxed about this. And if you're more relaxed, it will come through when you're talking. And if something happens, you will just laugh about and you will, you know, if you're in a live video, you will be, you know, full of humor and say, oh, look, we got a problem here. Wait, everyone. And it will be amazing. And I always remember this really fun YouTube video. It was a lady who is a pianist and she was um, doing a concert somewhere. Uh, I remember she had dark hair and was speaking in German to the audience. I have no idea what she said. And then she started to play. As soon as she started to play, she goes, oh, something is wrong. And uh, there was something wrong with the piano. Maybe it hadn't been tuned. And of course, being a professional, she knew that was not the right thing to do. She couldn't do a concert. And so she um, called the, you know, whatever people were around to help with that. And while she was on stage, what happened is <laughs> she started to improvise stuff on this real fun piano while talking finally to people. And the piano was set up on some a square. And then the square was lowered while she was playing and making everyone laugh. She was playing real stuff and she was just going down. She disappeared into the pavement. The music was just going. She disappeared under the, you know, the, the whatever it's called, the podium. And then uh, within minutes, she was up again. The music never stopped and she was coming up with a new piano. <laughs> she just kept playing. <laughs> I thought it was amazing because she never lost her nerve. She knew what to do. Obviously, we just have the wrong piano here. Let's get a new one. She never stopped playing everything well. And I don't know how many million views will get to the piano, uh, piano video, but I think it's amazing because she was just comfortable and I want you guys to practice your equipment for two to three hours before you go on videos so you know what to press and what to do so you don't freak out and it's so important to feel great and to have fun with your videos. Okay, so once you're started to get ready for your cameras to work and your microphones to work, etc., you can start practicing. But I want you to have a focused practice. What I want you to do is to think about your important message. Yes, you're talking about a product, you're talking about an item or a service that you're offering, but what is your important message there? What is it? For example, the important message that I have here is that you can do videos if you just plan step by step and you put out of the way a few concerns, which is what we're talking about. But what is your message? Is it about surviving trauma or surviving a disastrous marriage? Is it about getting a degree in only two years? Is that possible? Whatever your important message, let's make sure that the important message is there. It's present, is a constant theme, is in the headline, the titles, there is an explanation, there are keywords, and the overall thing, everything, the music, the colors, everything just goes with the important message. Is resonating and it's in the right place. So if that's important message, you will be the big thing. People look at the video as they are scrolling YouTube, TikTok and whatever. And from the title, they will know, oh, this person has a message about X. I want you to be really sure what the message is. And this leads me to the next point. The next point is, do you solve a problem? What is this problem? So you have to talk about a problem and talk about the solution. Make sure you explain what's the problem and make sure you get to the solution or to something leading to the solution and give tips to people. People love tips, that's why they watch video. And this really reminds me why your looks and being absolutely beautiful and perfect don't matter because what you are selling is something that will make somebody happy by making them achieve something or by solving a problem, by taking away a pain or by adding to their life in some way. And just the fact that you look beautiful is not really going to change your life much. But the fact that you solve a problem or their pain, that is going to matter a lot to these people. The last suggestion I want to give you to make sure you can get ready straight away to make your videos is to practice, 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 practice. Why is that? 
because the more you practice, the more you will become comfortable. Some of the procedures will become more automated, will be faster, you can do batches all together, you can do editing all together. I sometimes record several episodes all together and then I edit them all together. And you know what? It doesn't take much longer to edit two episodes compared to one. Once you get going, you can do lots of stuff. In the beginning, when I was using GarageBand for the first time, after trying Audacity and learning nothing and feeling like an idiot, I thought, oh, this is going to be so difficult, this is so hard. And then I found, guess what, a couple of YouTube videos. They were the beginner's guide of GarageBand and I thought, oh, we're going to watch that. And it was three hours and I watched the videos and I started to play around to see, oh, what will happen if I press this button and that button and this button. And now I can put together a podcast, add layers to add some music. I can cut off bits that are not very good. Maybe I was just uh, clearing my voice like that. (coughs) And I can take that off any minute. Or I can put the volume up and down for me and I can equalize the voice for me and for the guests that I'm interviewing. I can put copyright free music and put it up there. I can save it. I can go to Libsyn, I can upload it and put all the stuff. Now, I didn't learn all this in one day. I practiced and in the beginning it took me maybe an hour of working and editing and sometimes I deleted the whole episode by mistake and I had to restart. But eventually, after doing 10 or 20 episodes, I have learned to do it very, very fast. And when I hear people that edit podcasts and take them an hour, I'm like, what on earth are we doing to the podcast? I take literally five minutes. But that's because I practice, practice and practice and practice. So practice talking to an empty room, <laughs> looking at the wall, looking at the mirror, practice editing your beats and push through the uncomfortable feeling of speaking to nobody. And I want to address this point because one of my colleagues said, you know, I can do anything you want, Franz. I can talk to anyone, any audience, a thousand people, I don't care, but I cannot get myself to talk to an empty wall. (laughs) I know I get it, right? But that's what I do. So I gave him some suggestion and to close this episode, I really want to talk about them for a minute. So here's number one. First of all, is it possible to put a mirror in front of yourself? Because sometimes the camera is not giving you the image. So yeah, I know what you mean. So is there a mirror? You can talk to the mirror. So you're talking to yourself, to your twin, to your clone, your beautiful clone. Talk to him. Second, when you are practicing, you can practice by using an app in your telephone that's called Marco Polo. It's free. You cannot do any editing or, or rewinding, going back, you know, and forward, unless it's a pro version, which is a pay version. But normally speaking, just hold it in there, put it on a tripod, start talking. And pretend you're making a video for these people, then watch it. Or send it to a person that is in your contact list and say, what do you think of this? What would you change? Was it clear? How was the audio? Was there enough light? And that's an easy way of sending videos without people downloading or uploading anything. Marco Polo, we just call it Polo, I've been using it for years, maybe five years, and it's really fun. And um, so Marco Polo is a great way without having cumbersome heavy videos on your computer. You can also practice on Apple Mac using QuickTime. I'm not sure what they will be on a PC, but there will be lots of programs. Just pick up whatever you have and practice your position, your pose, your way of talking, where you're going to sit and all the things you might make noises by mistakes, you start thinking, all right, when I'm recording, I need something to make my voice a little bit less cold. So you might put soft furnishing around your things that help you to do, to have a better recording experience because, you know, sound travels and when it hits hard things, you will hear that. And so you might be very lucky and have a recording studio amazing most people don't have that so you can just think about blankets around you something that functions like shock absorbers and sound absorbers so that you will have a much more intimate video and also practice to go backwards and far away from your video as i'm doing now and then go back and very very close to your microphone and have your headphones to listen to what happens look at that look at the light change the light to see what's come what's coming out better So make loads and loads of practice videos. I did 17 episodes, I think, of my podcast on a different topic. 
and after the, no, I think I done seven episodes, seven full episodes, that's it, <laughs> on a completely different topic. I recorded them, I edit them, and I edit all the music, and then that was it. Fine, brilliant, I done them, and then I started to do Create with Friends. So the first seven episodes were just my practice, and um, it was really helpful. So my idea is if you get practicing, you're going to be so good, you will not believe it. And um, my advice for today is I've given you so much information and really to go through all these points, it will take you a while. So let me know how it goes. Let me know if I was speaking too fast, if I've given you too much information and if you want to know more or if you have more problems. I'm so glad you've been with me for all this time to listen to this and I'm very excited to help you to get your video production going. And this is what we're going to talk about in the next episode. We're going to talk about your video production plan, what to do in order to get working on your videos. So if you like this episode, please press like and share with people who might like it. If you want to know more about all this, ask me and maybe we can put together a lovely program to help you to get going and to get those videos you really want to do, but you don't know how to start. So uh, thank you so much for being with me and I hope that you were just fine with my Italian accent and with my very fast way of talking today. But it was fun to talk to you, so thank you again and I'll see you next week. Bye bye! You've listened to Create with Franz Sidney.